Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Visitor News Live. I'm Celeste Ryan Blyden. I'm Michelle Bernard. And I'm Ricardo Backus. You know, it was 125 years ago that the Visitor Magazine began as a twice monthly four page print newsletter to share news reports of the work of the Seventh day Adventist Church in Ohio. In 1907, when the Columbia Union was established, it was moved to the Union and grew right along with our church membership into a 48 page full color magazine and has become a staple visitor, literally, to the homes of our members across eight states, creating community through communication. Today, thanks to technology, we also share news and stories through our website, email, video, and social media. And tonight, due to COVID-19, we are adding Visitor News Live, a series of conversations about how our members are coping with the impact of the coronavirus. For the next few weeks, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7.30, we'll be right here. And we'll invite some of our members, our pastors, our leaders to join us and share stories and talk about how we're coping, how mission and ministry continue, and how God continues to work in and through his people across the Columbia Union, just as we do with every issue of the print visitor. We'll talk about how members are coping with social distancing and finding creative ways to stay connected and still attend church. How school is being held online and in virtual classrooms and how health caregivers are selflessly serving those who are struggling. While we're live, you can post questions and comments and let us know you're watching. You can also watch later and we'll share clips and segments on our webpage, columbiaunionvisitor.com and on the Columbia Union Visitor YouTube channel. You can also share story ideas and topics in the Facebook comment section or email us at visitor at columbiaunion.net. We'd love to hear from you. As we begin, let's invite God's presence. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have to come together and talk about the storm that we are collectively experiencing. We invite your presence here tonight. We ask for your guidance. We ask you to bless each participant and each viewer. And may our conversation and what we learn from one another tonight be a blessing to all who see and hear. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so tonight we're going to kick off our series with some very special guests. And right now, we want to welcome them. And I want to ask that they wave as we introduce them. And Ricardo and Michelle are going to be working on the social media, checking things out and looking to see what comments you might have what questions you might have for us. But right now, as I look at the panel, I'm gonna introduce them. We have Kevin Kruger. Kevin, wave at us, is the president and general manager of our media ministry in the Columbia Union called WGTS 91.9. I have Dr. Barry Black, chaplain of the United States Senate. Thank you, Chaplain Black, for coming to be with us tonight. I have Dr. Marissa Leslie, and she is the chair of psychiatry for our own Adventist Healthcare, based in here in Maryland. And I see Dr. Heather Cruz. She is a pastor of the Court Road, Courthouse Road, Seventh Day Adventist Church in Virginia. And finally, I have Dr. Frank Zolman, and he is the pastor of the Appleton Seventh Day Adventist Church, and he's my pastor. And we're so thankful that you all are here tonight. And so first I wanna ask you the question that is on all of our minds, okay? And I, we have a group of folks here tonight who are open and willing to share. So everybody just take a minute and tell us, how are you being impacted by the COVID? How are you doing? What's happening? Who wants to go first? We won't all speak at once, but um, it, 
what has happened is everything that's foundational that I could say, hey, this goes without being said, has been picked up and thrown up in the air and put together back in different pieces. Wow. Well, what does that look like? You want to expound on that just a tiny bit? A, a tiny bit I can. Um, I'm a pastor. I'm a wife of uh, almost 14 years and two small children, which means our professional life is all based out of our home now. My husband is, has an office upstairs. I have my office and the kids are both uh, having online school. So just the logistics of what does it take to have a schedule and take care of everyone? It's different. Sounds like my house. Kind of crazy right now. <laughs> crazy, great explanation. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Well, well, it's uh, uh, I guess now we're all going. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll health care. Um, it's, it's really, it's just, if we thought we were busy before, I didn't think it was possible to be busier, but we are busy. It, it is a constant, we're at war. That's how it's affecting my life. I, I feel like I'm a soldier. I've never been in the military, but this has got to be what it feels like um, just to constantly prepare uh, to to constantly think about the safety of everyone, including yourself, and to rapidly revise strategies and approaches, and but also developing a lot of solidarity as soldiers in this fight. Okay, Chaplain? Well, I'm the pastor for the lawmakers uh, in, in the upper chamber of the legislative branch. So I have been praying through the impeachment inquiry, through the impeachment trial, and now through COVID-19. Uh, I've had to be involved up until a few days ago. Uh, we were trying to pass and did pass the $2 trillion stimulus package. So that was in and out of the Capitol. I was in the Capitol today for a pro forma session and some other responsibilities. Uh, I also have uh, done video. I've done video um, Bible studies for the lawmakers. I normally do four Bible studies a week. So I've gone to the radio and television studio of the Senate and I've done those. Uh, so I was called to the White House to the Situation Room when the president met with the governors and had the opportunity of praying a prayer to open that meeting, swabbed down very thoroughly, of course, the temperature stuff the forehead and the cheeks. Uh, so it's been a very busy time for me. And quite frankly, uh, this opportunity to shelter in place uh, is kind of nice. <laughs> you know, it's like our Lord saying, let us come aside and rest a while. So uh, it's uh, a chance now for me to slow down, spend a little more time with Brenda, uh, my bride of 46 years. We were, of course, only two years old when we when we married. Uh, not really. <laughs> so it it's been very frenetic because of the nature of of my work. But finally, I'm able to catch my breath and to reflect on what does this all mean. Well said. Well said, everyone. So Kevin, why don't you share? Sure. Uh, well, you know, being in media, it's obviously an essential uh, industry to stay on and uh, to be there for people, whether that's relaying important information uh, that they need to hear, whether that's the, the hope and encouragement. And we know how to do that kind of under regular circumstances, right? We've worked on that for a, a, a long time, even though we're always tweaking it and changing it. But doing it under circumstances where we must, you know, remain separate. So our team is scattered, essential people in the studios, but they cross paths, you know, gingerly, if you will, and such. So it's changed. It definitely has. And uh, the types of responses we get from listeners, uh, like more phone calls than ever coming in, there's a lot of concern and worry. So mm -hmm. praying with more people than ever, we'll talk about some of it more later, but, um, at the same time that we're trying to get used to, like it's described as the new normal, the, uh, the pressure has increased uh, to be there for people. And I think a lot of others on our, on our Brady Bunch screen here today probably feel the same way. Uh, it's not a time when 
things have you know released, but a time when when there's more, especially I'm sure looking at the pastors and you know on the screen three here and healthcare, you got a busy group here together, Celeste. <laughs> Everybody oh. is is really feeling that pressure of being there for people. Yeah, and, and those of us who have children at home, and you have two daughters and Marissa does and Heather does and I do, you know, those who have children, we're also homeschooling. We're trying to work. Mm. We're trying to uh, well, telework and uh, homeschool and we're cooking three meals a day. And I told some people, my husband is now the IT director because everybody's on Zoom for their 9 a.m., whether it's a class or work or whatever. And he's going around making sure that all the connections are working. So we're just we're just doing it all. So, Pastor Frank, what about you? What's your world like right now? Well, it's strange not to see all of our church members every week. So but we've been trying to find a, a way to connect with them, um, obviously socially distanced, but uh, we're doing what most people, most churches are trying to do, reaching out through uh, various uh, media, social media, uh, live streaming and stuff like that. I've found it on a personal basis that uh, trying to do this is a whole lot more stressful than being able to see people and just give them a hug because that's the way we greet people at the Atholton Church. And, and uh, that's, I've been kind of missing that. And in addition to that, on a personal basis, I keep asking my wife, what day of the week is this? Mm -hmm. Because I'm having a hard time being home so much. I'm having a hard time, the rhythm of my life, uh, not being with my church family on Sabbath morning. It seems to bookend the week. And when we miss a Sabbath, it's like, where's the week? Where are we? And so I continually have to say to myself, what day is this? Well, this is um, Thursday. Yeah. And you know, well, pa uh, Heather, you being a pastor also, um, and, and since you have to leave in a little while, I want to get you in to share a little bit about, you know, what is ministry like for you these days? You know, where, where are all the members that you hug and you visit and, you know, you, you, you they bring you dishes of delicious home-cooked meals and other things like that, right? What's, what's it like for you? Well, life is just, I mean, I, I resonate with what has been shared about the whole pace and pattern of life is different. I mean, you look at my home now, it, the IT director, that's my husband. Um, he's a software engineer, and so he can, he can work from home. And I used to have some quiet space to get stuff down and, done, and it's not quiet in my house. And I love the energy and I love the together time, but it's, it, it is a new pattern mm -hmm. and it takes extra energy to figure out a new pattern rather than going through and just going through my routine. Um, and it's also more stressful. Earlier this week, Eric uh, got online with his st stand up meeting to begin the day. Eric's my husband. And they said, we're going to be laying off 10% of our workforce and those who still have a job will be pay taking pay cuts and uh, compensation is changing and we'll let you know by 2 p.m. which category you're in. So that made a very hard day. So we have never been so thankful for a pay cut before because he still does have a job. But just the weight of all of these changes, I know if I'm feeling them, my church is feeling them as well. So going into a church, walking in, looking at the empty seats where I'm used to seeing people or hearing children laughing, that's a little hard. So we had to get creative. I got inspired. Are you up for a picture, Celeste? Yes. Show us what you, what you did. You posted this on Facebook. Posted and I thought it was so interesting. So I'm actually going to show you the Facebook post. Yeah, uh, share your screen. All right. Did that work for you? Yes. Uh, okay. And then show us the picture. Did the picture not go, come? Nope. <laughs> All right. Technology. Technology. Take two. Keep um, while you try and yeah. maybe tell us, describe to us. What okay. You what we did was I was inspired by someone else and you may see a different screen because I have too many open. Do you see it yet? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Not even three, third time's a charm. Um, I walked into the church and as I was preparing for church beforehand, looking at the empty chairs, that whole what will it look like to be speaking to a blank canvas? And I got inspired by someone else who had talked about filling the seats. And you can see here how we fill the seats. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I thought that was awesome. Of each member of your family, and we will give them a seat. 
Now, an elder told me I was only 60% accurate on where I placed people. Thankfully, my people were kind and did not elbow each other or fight over where they were at. But it looks, it looks different. Here, instead of being able to go up and give that hug or say thank you for the lady who made me this amazing Jamaican dish, I'm having to uh, spend a lot of time on Zoom, calling, texting, we gave our church a challenge every week saying, um, how can you connect with your church? Because we realize we, while we're doing social spacing and we need, we need each other very much. Right. So as you take the picture down, um, tell us um, what, you know, how are your children dealing with like not going to Sabbath school and how are they getting that Sabbath school time in? Well, I am thankful my kids are going to an Adventist school, which means they have worship every morning. So that helps feed their soul. My son sitting at his, do, his Zoom uh, conference, um, actually doing hand motions to scriptures as they recite them together. That's helping them. But it, we do have to be a lot more intentional. So we put the, uh, we talk a lot. We give a lot more hugs because I can tell in them that they're also feeling the pressure that they know that their life is not the same when they're playing a Minecraft game and the, creature, the little creatures running around in there all have a COVID-19, they know what's going around. Wow, well, thank you for, for sharing that with us. You know, Kevin, your, your team ministers, and I wonder if people, like I wanna just put this in perspective a little bit. There are 140,000 Seventh-day Adventist members in the eight states of the Columbia Union. And we praise God for every member. We love our members. Every week, you minister to 600,000 listeners on the radio. And your team, I'm imagining, has seen like an uptick in calls or seen some um, reaction due to the whole COVID. Tell us what the experience is like for you. you know, sure, one of the... One of the things that is so important to our team all the time is prayer. And so we invite people to call for prayer and we talk about it on the air often and, and we share prayer requests uh, as people call in. We have an entire part of our website um, called Prayer Works. And uh, last week I asked somebody, and so this is informal, but they said the number of prayer requests coming in each day has about doubled. So this is just on the website. There's 30 to 50 a day, some days closer to 30, some days over 50 prayer requests um, coming in just on the website and then in the phone. So there's definitely a, a felt need. There's a level of concern and of fear. We talk about it on the air a lot. You know, how do we deal with anxiety um, and fear? So we're having a lot more uh, interviews uh, to deal with that. And uh, we're talking about it a lot more with people and they're responding. So it's, um, yeah. it's like a community, you know, it's like us via Zoom here, we're getting together and we're talking about things. And, and as we talk about it, it's therapy, right? So right. it's similar for people that call in, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or um, somebody shares on the air and, you know, the other, you know, 20,000 people listening at that moment, I envision them, you know, nodding along going, that's exactly how I feel. So what kinds of, you, you get emails probably and calls. Can you just share just a couple of snippets from emails you've gotten recently? Sure, yeah. So in addition to prayer requests specific to COVID-19, we all continue to live our regular lives. And so the stress that might be there with the regular life layered with COVID. So one of them that came in uh, this week with COVID-19 uh, she says, you can imagine there are fewer people renting apartments. I can no longer to afford to pay the, the high $3,000 a month rent. And she goes on to talk about how she's unemployed now. She talked about how her husband uh, emptied her bank accounts. She doesn't know where he is in the country. She says, I'm just thankful that uh, I can live with my mother at this time and invited us to pray for her. Um, we see prayer requests in the area of health, of course, all the time. And one specifically said, please pray for my brother, Matthew, who is a nurse who has COVID-19 right now and can't breathe. He's coughing blood. I'm praying for healing and strength also for the doctors and the medical professionals as they work with him. And she continues, she just offers it here on, on her note as a prayer, 
I pray, please, Lord Jesus, have mercy and take care of my brother for the sake of his family. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's really felt. Um, it's a lot, and you can feel the stress um, in the prayer requests as they come in. And I think we're spending more time on the phone because the, the prayer requests are not you know, quick. Uh, they involve some conversation and as we pray for people. Uh, but honestly, Celeste, it's an honor. We consider it an honor. Uh, the, team is, the team is going hard, long hours every day, but it's an honor because this is what we're here for. Uh, right. I believe this is when, you know, Columbia Union, the hospital system, the churches, the mm -hmm. media, like WGTS, this is what God has put us here for, right, for such a time as this. Amen. Thank you. And Heather, we're going to say thank you to you. We know you have to leave, but we thank you for helping us to get a glimpse of what life is like for you. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you. All right, Dr. Leslie, mm -hmm. mental health expert, okay, help us with this. You know, what happens physically and emotionally when we experience the stress that we've all described, that we're all in together, when no one is immune? Uh, is there some kind of known or unknown response? Kind of unpack that for us. Well, the known response is something you've probably heard, the fight or flight response. And we're either fighting or we're flying. Uh, we're in survival mode right now. And it was really sudden. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of preparation. It, it, we, we heard the news stories. It seemed like it was far away. Came to the United States. And like I mentioned to you last night, Celeste, I think as soon as the schools closed, that's when panic set in. Like, wow, this is starting to affect me now. And every few days, a new restriction would come um, for public safety, but we just lost the sense of control. And when you lose the sense of control, psychologically, you try to control something. And so it may be the kids' online school, or it may be your husband making dinner. Um, your body starts to feel tenser. And just a, a brief PSA for people working at home. You know, I, I realized today how helpful offices are because the chairs are correct and you're typing at the right angle. Make sure you're taking care of your body as you're typing, working, zooming, because you'll feel it. Your back will hurt, which will make things worse. But that's what we're feeling, this loss of sense of control and, and the sudden impact of not ever being in this situation. So we're, we're fighting, we're flying, we're trying to survive right now. That's the mode we're in. Yes, thank you. So is this why, well, I was going to say, why did, why did we feel the need to stock up? You know, I, I had a friend who told me that... <clears throat> When all of this was happening, you were talking about these restrictions started coming. He said, he works with government. He said, I didn't even call in sick. I didn't even alert anybody. I got up the next morning, crack of dawn. As soon as the stores opened, I went in and I just started throwing things in the cart. I just started filling up carts. He said, I bought about $500 worth of food and, you know, took it home because I just felt like something was happening. Like, it was almost like it was a visceral reaction. Like the whole country went grocery shopping, mm -hmm. you know. That's true. Why, why, did, why did we do that? Why did we hoard and stock up on toilet paper and everything? What were we thinking it was going to do if the end was coming? Well, it gave us some sense of control. Yeah. And I think we also saw Italy and China. It wasn't like there was absolutely no precedent for this. We saw what happened. Their countries were locked down. Yeah. And the need to provide um, and just the fear of being in our homes for who knows how long and not having to not wanting to go out. I think that's why people stocked up. They realize that this is they are trying to survive. And if I can control my life with by making sure I get the last disinfectant wipe, then that's what I'm going to try to do. That's right. I'm right here. <laughs> right next to me, just in case. <laughs> so, um, anybody else, just maybe one or two of you, what reaction did you have? Did you do something or find yourself doing something unusual? I, I went and filled up the tank with gas, I'll tell you that. Anybody else did something? I did too. I, the thing I found the strangest was I went to the grocery store, and of course they were out of toilet paper, but 
here was the kicker. They, they were out of broccoli. I couldn't believe they were out of broccoli. Oh, no. But they were. So I bought <coughs> zucchini squash. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, Celeste, I also think that, uh, like the story of Joseph and the setting aside of the 20%, when you know that a famine is coming, uh, whether it's an emotional famine or a physical famine, you try to prepare for it. And I think that that's what, uh, uh, that gives that sense of control, uh, which has already been articulated. But I also think that you, you, you learn about, uh, the power of God in, in these instances as well. That something invisible, um, you know, can wreak havoc on the globe astounds me. I just got word uh, two days ago that one of my closest minister friends, a Presbyterian friend, larger than life, about 6'3", 25 years younger than I, Diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, a week and a half ago, and it's gone, just died. And it just, it's like a member of the family dying. I mean, you're devastated by this. No matter how much faith you have that you'll see that person again, you're absolutely devastated. And then you listen to the 24-7 news cycle. <laughs> And yes. Proverbs says, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. <laughs> so, so they have 24 hours to fill. So yeah. you know somebody's going to start lying. and <laughs> it, it gets crazy. And so I think hearing obituaries, literally, I mean, these folk who are prominent and they're leaving this world, it is a scary thing even for a person of faith and I think the, the fight flight that has been so eloquently articulated kicks in and you try to find some way to control it. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff here <laughs> and we, we procured it since uh, this crisis has begun. So, yeah. So then let me ask this. Why, why is it so difficult? I mean, even for stalwart believers, I mean, Chaplain, those are the people who can quote, you know, chapter and verse, you know, and even pastors. I mean, we were getting reports that even our pastors, and I should say even our pastors, those of us in ministry, those of us in leadership, no one is immune. I mean, when you see every day breaking news, breaking news, you know, press conference, and then they're showing you images of body bags on the floors of hospitals and doctors are stepping over them to get in to, to work with the next patient, we're all jarred by these images. So talk about that for a little bit in terms of spirituality. Well, I think the ability to quote scripture is not enough, okay? There were 6,000 uh, Pharisees, you know, they kind of capped it out. And then you had the scribes who wrote the law and added to the law, you know, many times hundreds of additional uh, things you had to do, even for Sabbath observance. Many of the Pharisees could quote the first five books of Moses from memory. Wow. And yet if you read Matthew chapter 16, the most excoriating rhetoric from our Lord was to these people who had photographic recall of the Pentateuch. It's not enough. You have to have an experiential encounter with that word. Knowledge is not enough, you know. Um, Germany was one of the most amazing nations in terms of knowledge. It gave us Mozart, Mendelssohn, Bach, Beethoven, the whole nine yards, and yet we also have the Holocaust from that. And so what what this has done for me is it has helped me to step up my spiritual game and to begin to take God a lot more seriously than I have. And I've been preaching for a long time yeah. um, because it, it's, a, it's a reminder that obeying his word is critical and he's interested in my well-being. And if this little invisible force can, you, you hear what they're estimating, Celeste. I mean, 100, 
1,000 to 240 as a best case scenario? Are you kidding me? It, when you realize the power of God and the fact that he has given us a blueprint on how to live, it makes you take that a lot more seriously. And uh, I'm thankful for it in many ways. You know, First Thessalonians 5.18, I'm quoting like a Pharisee, I know. <laughs> it says, in everything, give thanks. And I would challenge us and, and those who are listening in or viewing to try to think of, right out um, each day, 25 things that you're thankful for. And that, that, that's a great exercise. We've got time to do that. 25 yeah. things that you are, you are thankful for. For the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. And, and that's what I've been trying to do. Thank you. And, and Dr. Leslie, from a, from a mental health expert perspective, how can faith play a role here for us? Well, before I talk about some of the research on faith and prayer, I'm going to give thanks. Yeah. Um, I, I've been needing equipment so some of my doctors can see their patients remotely. Because when you have a skeleton crew of doctors, if any of them have to self-isolate, that affects the number of people we can help. Mm -hmm. So I, some of my friends have been asking, how can I help? I've asked concretely, what are you doing at your hospital? I've gotten the answers in minutes. And I asked a friend to pray. I said, pray that we have enough protective equipment and pray that we get enough technology. And today I got the technology I needed. So I'm thankful. Praise God. Um, That's great. Let me just say this. Let me just say this before you, before you do that. Because we have viewers. We have people who are watching. And based on what you just said and Chaplain Black just said, you know, I think there's merit in that. We, we told people tonight, if you have questions, you can post your questions. And our panel will um, respond to them if we can get to those. So if you have questions right now, I want to invite you to share them. But also... If you have something to say thank you about, something you're thankful for, grateful for, post that on our page too. Let's follow the, the counsel of our elders here and think of something that you're thankful for right now. That's gonna help as well. So please go ahead. Yeah, so, so faith and prayer. Um, faith gives you something deeper when the world is shaken around you to hold on to. Something that you can't, um, proved by research, but you can prove by experience to Chaplain Black's point. Um, prayer has been shown to help people as they recover. Faith, prayer, meditation, um, stillness can really help reduce the heart rate, help you breathe easier and deeper, um, and it helps you feel connected. Uh, I, I think we won't get through this if we don't have each other. So it's not just about personal prayer, but it's about corporate prayer. We need to come together. And I believe faith without works is dead. So I'm not just saying to just pray without donating, without calling and FaceTiming and Zooming um, those who are isolated. But I do believe that corporate prayer can help us feel more connected. And connection is important in, an, in a time when we're telling people to socially distance. And one of my physician colleagues said, that's the wrong term. We're physically distancing, but socially, we need to connect now more than ever. Yeah. And there is healing in connection. There are, are bonding chemicals that are released in our brain and in our body when we connect and when we feel loved and cared for. And we need that more than ever to help our immunity to help our mindset, to help us through this long fight that we have. Wow, thank you. Um, Pastor Frank, you have been preaching and while your congregation can't be there, you're online talking to us. Now, what on earth do you say? How has this whole thing changed your sermons? What are you going to well, preach about this Sabbath, even? The, the, the whole dynamic of preaching to empty pews, uh, <laughs> Heather already talked about that. I haven't put pictures out. But it, it is difficult, but it's possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you, when you know that it's, you're, you're really connecting with your church family through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
against the miles, you know, we are together, we are united. The first Sabbath we couldn't meet, I made a decision that I was going to preach the sermon that I had decided weeks before that I was going to preach. And here was my rationale. I believe so strongly in the sovereignty of God that he knew that we weren't going to be in church that Sabbath. I preached on being filled with the Holy Spirit. And he, he knew when he put that in my heart to preach that sermon that we weren't going to be there. And yet there was someone or a group of people who needed to hear that sermon that day. And so I just went ahead and preached uh, what I had already planned for weeks to preach. Now, this coming Sabbath, I hadn't had any plans. And so I've been casting about on what I'm going to preach about. And I decided to preach on the book of Joel. And in my devotions, I ran across Joel chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. It says, Hear this, you aged men. Give ear, all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it and let their children tell their children and their children another generation. Now, in, in uh, Joel's time, it was a plague of locusts. But I think there are instructions and counsel in Joel that will help us cope with this COVID crisis. And so I'm looking at the principles that God gave Joel to give to the people, and we will see if those are helpful for us in this current situation. Thank you. Thank you. Chaplain Black, you pastor the senators and their families. You do their funerals, their weddings, their baby blessings. What are you saying to them now? You're doing, you're doing radio addresses and Bible studies. What are you saying to them? Well, we, we're going through a series on experiencing an extreme spiritual makeover. Uh, and so that has been a wonderful series that I've continued talking about how to go from being a spiritual caterpillar to becoming a spiritual butterfly. Okay. So I'm having fun with that. But another thing that I've been talking to them about is how to get through what you're going through. And I'm using Philippians 4, 6, and 7, which I think is a great scripture for these times. Have no anxiety about anything, but pray about everything mm -hmm. with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that passes understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Yes. And there are just a few quick points in that. First, pray about everything. Yes. So all of the things that are happening to you, regardless of how minuscule or insignificant they may seem, pray about everything. You talked about children. Well, if you have an empty nest, you, st you still have anxiety about your children. I have a son who's a surgeon in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. What great, great concern. Um, because he's on the front line. So pray, pray about everything. Secondly, pray with thanksgiving, as we, as we talked about. Yeah. Um, and one of the best ways of doing that is to pray the Psalms, which are essentially prayers. Um, that'll, get you, that'll get you going. The 34th Psalm says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continually be in my mouth. Yes. And Job, going through a lot more than most of us, said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But then finally, pray with the expectation of God's peace, is what I've been talking to, to them about. And the peace of God. Yes. Even, no matter what's going on, in, in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis, and the peace of God that passes understanding, where people are basically, who do not know the Christ, says, how in the world can you maintain this equanimity of temperament in what you're going through? It, it passes understanding. The Greek says, will guard your heart. It's like a soldier on watch. Will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So yeah. those, those three principles out of Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Pray about everything, okay? 
pray with thanksgiving. You know, write those, write, write it out in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God. And then pray expecting the peace of our blessed Lord. When G just before he ascended, uh, he said, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. He could have left us uh, uh, anything, but he says, peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. My peace I give unto you. Yeah. Not as the world gives, give oh. I unto you. People of faith should not be responding to this cataclysmic crisis as those who have no faith. So that's what I try to share to the, to, to, with the senators. I'm talking to them on a daily basis, calling them. Uh, they get my videos to the, to the members of their staffs, to the members of their family. Approximately 7,000 people in the upper chamber uh, right. that I pastor and the challenge is to let them know that God has this. Amen. Thank you. And you just do me a favor, put your iPad right there so you can come in the center. Okay. While you're preaching. <laughs> when I preach, I go I wild. Got, I'm, yeah, I go know. rogue. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> no, you're doing good. I'm so thankful for those words of comfort. Every time you speak, we, we, I'm just so blessed and, and I'm so thankful for those reminders. Praise God. Reminders that we need. Now, Dr. Leslie, we need you to give us some practical tips as well, okay, of how we can cope. So we know we're going to recite the scriptures. We're going to pray the Psalms. Um, we're going to remember that God gives us peace. Are there any, what, what can we do um, from your perspective in mental health that ties that together? Sure. Number one, do not engage in the 24 seven news cycle. What? Praise the Lord. I gotta turn it off. Uh, uh, thank you. No more I need body that. bags and you know, but I'm, I'm feeling my heart goes out to everybody. <laughs> I need to know the latest. It's important to be informed. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It is important to read and be informed. I, I read NPR. Um, I do listen to some of the news conferences to understand uh, what people are being told, but I read a lot of science. Um, I'm really trying to understand how this virus is being battled, but I do not engage in the 24-7 news cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have to shout out my healthcare system. My healthcare system has provided free childcare to essential workers. Wow. And so I drive my daughter to daycare every morning. I know it's a it's a bit of a risk, but we screen and I feel comforted that she's in a safe place. I can't turn on the news when she's in the car. She's soaking up everything. And our prayers every night are about coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And we need to infuse some normalcy in our, our families' homes. So number two, routine. Yeah. It's important to have one. Pastor, I, I heard you. You don't know what day it is. I get that. I don't have a choice. I have to go in. <laughs> but if you can, routine is important. It's especially important for children. Mm -hmm. Go to bed at the same time. Wake up at the same time. And I'll keep saying it. Try to go to bed earlier. It's really tempting to just stay up, read, watch TV, disconnect, be informed, uh, but get rest. Mm -hmm. Your body needs the rest. Your immunity needs the rest. Drink water. That may not sound like a, a mental health tip, but it is. I'm get mine Drink right water. now. Everybody get some water. Everybody needs it. I found the other day I was running and I've gone down to two meals a day because of my <laughs> schedule. I wasn't drinking enough water and I thought, oh, I can't breathe that well. Maybe something's wrong. I drank water. I, I, my breathing improved immediately. Drink water, exercise, walk, and then finally connect. Like I said, absent from the body. We may be absent from physically being with each other, but we need to be present in the spirit and present um, with FaceTime, present by calling. Check on our elders. You know, many elderly members and, and brothers and sisters are feeling really isolated right now. They may be widowed, they may be widowers. We have to be there for them. Deliver their groceries, have someone deliver it and leave it outside. Don't let them interact with uh, someone they don't know, but let's check on each other and let's make it through this 
together. Together. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. You know, one of the other things that I'm looking for in all of this crisis is glimmers of hope. Glimmers of hope. And that is the amazing thing about the ministries here in the Columbia Union. Um, we have eight conferences. We have a university and a uh, health sciences college. We have two healthcare networks and 13 hospitals. We have 140,000 amazing members. And I am just amazed at how our ministries are rising to meet this challenge, finding innovative ways to deliver ministry. We may not be able to be physically with each other, Pastor Frank, but our members are doing Zoom, Bible study. You had a prayer meeting last night. You did a Zoom prayer meeting. Um, and maybe just tell us one thing that's happening, and then I want to talk about what Kevin and WGTS are doing. He's going to show us an example of what they've been doing to bring hope. But Pastor Frank, tell us something Appleton's been doing. Well, as you say, uh, we have been uh, trying to use Zoom uh, frequently for Sabbath schools and this week for prayer meeting. <laughs> Our school, the Athelton Adventist Academy, uh, missed the week of prayer because of, of having to not have school. And so we as pastors put together uh, devotionals every morning uh, yeah. that the kids watched and they were watched enough so that um, we actually... Uh, had, had to move them to another server because they were getting so much uh, viewage. So that's something we're doing. I, I want to just tell you one th one personal blessing of, of this whole stay at home thing. I have had more meals with my wife in the last three weeks than I've had for months. And they've been really good meals. They've been healthy <laughs> meals. They're not those meals you pick up as you're running and you eat them and drop them in your lap while you're driving. Uh, they're good meals. And so that's been a real blessing in this, in this environment. Yes. I have to tell you, I love being with my family. It's craziness in the house. I get up at five in the morning just to get some work done before they get up. And then all day long with them and fall in the bed at night, but we're together. Mm -hmm. And I just love being together with those guys. Mm -hmm. So Kevin, WGTS, okay, and we're coming down to the close here. Pastor Chaplain Black, warm up your prayer now because we got some people out here who've been watching who want you to pray. So warm up for that. But Kevin is first going to talk to us about the awesome ministry of WGTS. We are so proud of the ministry that you are doing to reach the community and give them messages of hope. Show us the clip and then just tell us about what you and your team are doing and how mission is even more important now. Yeah, for so sure. Happen, yeah. Well, you mentioned hope. You know, it's huge. Uh, we've talked about, I've heard it mentioned several times in different ways, connecting and, and being a part of a community is so vital, so important. And like you said, it's not social distancing, it's physical distancing, but socially we need to stay together. And, you know, when one out of 10 people that live in DC are, are listening to the same thing, listening to WGTS, that's an incredible opportunity to come together. So the clip that I have is actually from uh, on the air uh, just yesterday. It's a listener who called in and the call was shared, but, but like tomorrow, I mentioned hope tomorrow, is a day of hope all day long. Uh, prayers and stories of, of how people are feeling, how they're dealing with it. And like this morning, you know, it, you mentioned the 24 hour news cycle and I'm so glad that you did that, that we need to avoid that because stories like one shared this morning, one of the early patients with COVID-19 in the state of Oregon is a gentleman who's 104 years old. He was released from the hospital today. He's all better we tend not to hear the stories of people that have recovered. We focus on the growing number of, of deaths, right? But there are people recovering um, every day and amazing stories like that. So yeah, I'll do a quick screen share here and we'll see uh, Becky on the image here and the audio that we hear will be actually from on air. Hopefully this will work good for us. 
Yes, 91.9. So many heroes to be grateful for who are risking their own health to help us out during this very difficult time. So today we're asking you, who is your hero that you're praying for? Call or text 800-700-1094. Sharon is in Mount Airy. My hero is my daughter, Audrey Pace. She works at the Carroll County Hospital in the emergency room. I'm trying not to cry, oh. but she's on the front line, and um, she's a medical tech at Carroll County. We're praying along with you for her protection and her safety, and just let her know that we're lifting her up in prayer. We appreciate her so much. I will, and thank you for WGTS. Oh. I'm sewing caps for all of them at the hospital, and I'm sitting there sewing and listening to WGTS. Oh, bless <laughs> you. It, it helps me feel encouraged and not like I can't do anything and I'm not doing anything. And yes. I'm, I'm just, you know, I feel like it I'm helps. doing something constructive. I think part of that, you know, feeling like I'm doing something constructive, um, that's huge. Like we talked about earlier and feeling a part of a sense of community um, as she does. You know, she felt safe to be able to call in and to talk with somebody. She felt safe to be able to share it. Um, and that's huge. We need a, a sense of safety around us because so much is crazy. I've heard the word crazy and I've used it myself, I think, more in the last couple of weeks than the last few months. Um, but, but there is hope. That's so important. There is hope. And I think the more we can talk about that, the more we can talk about the hope, the more we can share scripture, as uh, Chaplain Black has done, the more we can really remind ourselves. Mm -hmm. But the big picture is the immediate picture will take on perspective for us, and it'll help get us through. Wow. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm going to ask Michelle and Ricardo to come back and join us. They've been on the social media connecting with all the people watching and viewing and people have been posting some prayer requests and comments. And Michelle, if you're there, Ricardo. So what's it been like on social media tonight, guys? And what, what are you, what requests are you seeing out there, Michelle? I have a request from Hamlet Canosa from Tennessee, and he's asking for prayer for a former BMA Blue Mountain Academy student's brother who's been missing for 22 hours, so his family's asking for prayers. <clears throat> and um, we have another request from James Massey. He's asking for prayer for all of our medical professionals, calling them soldiers on the front lines, and um, other people like supply technicians, truck drivers, delivery drivers, and our stockroom heroes. Yeah. And there's a praise report from Peggy Jean Lee. Um, she's thankful for her pastor who's doing an extra mile Sabbath school and church, Bible study on Monday, prayer meeting on Wednesday, worship on Friday through Zoom. Um, there's a lot of prayers and a lot of prayer requests, but also a lot of praise for the, what God is doing. That's so awesome. So Chaplain Black, we're going to ask if you would close us out with prayer tonight. We're so thankful sure. for each of you being here. Kevin, for Pastor Frank, um, for Dr. Leslie. Thank you for those just practical tips and counsel and information. And um, Michelle and Ricardo, my co-hosts and assistant directors and editors at The Visitor. And uh, we'll be back next Tuesday night where we're gonna talk about some of the innovative ways that our members are staying connected, though physically distanced. So thank you for being with us tonight, Chaplain Black. God bless yeah. you and your ministry. Yeah. Pray thank for you. Us. Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are in control. Yes. And that your faithfulness is something that we can depend on. We thank you that our blessed Savior is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We praise you that this COVID-19 crisis, this global health crisis, is not a surprise to you. Mm. And we praise you that you love us so much, that you want what is best for us, that you are so wise, that you know what is best for us, 
and that you are so powerful that you can bring about what is best for us. We're grateful for a savior who in Matthew chapter 28 declared all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. We praise you that that is the backup that we have. Oh God, we pray for uh, those uh, prayer requests that have been made for James Massey, who uh, has been missing for 22 hours, and for our people on the front line, the medical folk who are doing your work, Lord, doing your work, being used by you. And we pray, oh God, that someone's life, as a result of what we've done this evening, someone's life will be permanently and positively change that someone as a result of what we have done here this evening will be stronger, wiser, and better. We praise you for the promise in Romans 8.28 that in everything you are working for the good of those who love you. And we love you, Lord who are the called according to not our purposes, but your purposes. And so the hymn of invitation that we've often sung, we, we, we just end this prayer with it. Have thy